So I have two metal, uh, two balls here. One is hard plastic, one is metal. Uh, the small one has a mass of about 60 grams, and if you roll it along a flat surface, it goes at a constant velocity. The bigger one has a mass uh, about twice as much, but 120 grams. Uh, also, you release it, I guess release these two on a flat surface. They don't go anywhere, oh, unless you give it an initial velocity. Uh, if you then tilt this surface up, I'm going to uh, raise one of the legs a little bit, and release them both from rest. So put my finger on the top of them, and let go. They roll. And the two interesting things to notice is one is that they're both accelerating, and the other is that they both accelerate by the same amount, even though these are uh, very different masses. Now, and the third thing I want to note is the, the angle that's involved here. I measured this angle to be two and a half degrees, and but what I mean by that is that if you have a uh, horizontal line, uh, that this is the angle of the track. So here is the track. Here's the angle theta. Okay, between the track and the horizontal. So uh, in this case, theta is equal to, it turns out to be 2.5 degrees um, above horizontal. That's what we say. So <clears throat> we can see what happens if we uh, raise this even more. Here is 10 degrees above horizontal. And here is 20 degrees above horizontal. Whoa. So every time I increase the angle, they roll still roll together, but the acceleration is greater and greater. And if I was to raise the angle all the way up to 90 degrees and drop them, they, it turns out that they, they drop together, and they drop at 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so Galileo uh, did these experiments with uh, rolling marbles down inclines, and he increased the inclination of the inclined planes and found that steeper inclines give greater accelerations. <coughs> this one rolls down fairly slowly. Uh, this one much faster, much faster, much faster. When the incline became vertical, the acceleration is at a maximum, and it's the same as that of a falling object. And Galileo found that when error resistance is negligible, so it's not important, then all objects fall with the same unchanging acceleration, and that's called free fall. Free fall is falling under the influence of gravity only, with no air resistance. Freely falling objects near the surface of the Earth accelerate at the rate of 9.80 meters per second per second, uh, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, the, the exact value, that 9.8, depends on altitude and uh, latitude on Earth. So if you go up to the top of a high mountain, it might be you know, 9.79 meters per second squared or 9.81 meters per second squared way down at, uh, at sea level. The velocity acquired by an object that has a constant acceleration, uh, which starts at rest, is v equals a times t. So under free fall, if you drop an object from rest, if it's going at about 10 meters per second squared, then after one second, it will be moving at 10 meters per second. That's what this 10 meters per second squared means. It also means that after two seconds, it will be moving at 20 meters per second. After three seconds, it will be moving at 30 meters per second, and so on. Non-free fall is when an object moves downward through the air, it experiences both a force of gravity, which we'll be calling mg, uh, pulling it downward, and an air drag force, f sub d, acting upward. f sub d depends on the speed of the object and also uh, speed of the object relative to the air, uh, and also the size and shape of the object. So that's why uh, in air, a hammer falls faster than a feather. Uh, they both have an upward uh, drag force acting on them due to the air, but the weight or the force of gravity on the hammer is much, much greater than the drag force, so, uh, so the air resistance is negligible for a hammer. Whereas with a feather, it's much lighter, so the, the drag force and the force of gravity are almost equal, and so it falls much, much more slowly. 
But if you could pump out all the air in a room and do this experiment in a vacuum, you would find that a hammer and a feather fall at the same rate. And this was actually done. There's a nice YouTube video of an Apollo astronaut uh, dropping a hammer and a feather on the moon. Uh, the difference there being that on the moon there is no air. So uh, we can make a table of the y position in meters, uh, the speed in meters per second, and the time uh, in seconds of a ball dropped from rest. So we can define its starting point to be y equals zero. Uh, after uh, after 0.1 seconds, it now has a velocity of negative 0.98 meters per second squared and that's how far it will will fall. After 0.2 seconds it'll be going negative uh, 1.96 meters per second and it's uh, fallen a little further, uh, etc. 0.4 seconds, 0.5 seconds, so uh, the position is increasing uh, I guess as t uh, proportional to time squared, the velocity is, uh, or the magnitude of the velocity is increasing linearly with time. And you can make a plot of position uh, versus time for a for a falling sphere and that will actually be this curved parabolic path and you can also make a plot of the slope of this line versus time that's going to be your velocity uh, that's this green line down here and that's a linearly decreasing uh, uh, line so here's uh, velocity meters per second uh, goes up the same amount for every interval of time and then the slope of the velocity versus time graph is acceleration, and that's going to be a constant value of negative 9.8 meters per second every second. So let's watch a slow motion video of me throwing a red ball up into the air and then catching it. Okay, now let's watch that again but I want you to think about the velocity and acceleration of this ball at three particular instants of time. First, this instant when the ball has left my hand and is on the way up. Second, this instant when the ball is at the top of its motion. And lastly, this instant when the ball is on the way down just before it is caught. Okay, so we'll do three uh, give it a try questions in a row based on uh, that video. So Jason throws a ball upward, it reaches a maximum height and then falls back down again. While the ball is going up, but after it has left Jason's hand, what is the direction of the acceleration vector of the ball? A up, B down, C zero. So please pause the video, think about that, and then we'll discuss the answer. Okay, so hopefully you realized that the acceleration vector is down. This ball is slowing down and its velocity is upwards, so uh, acceleration is in the opposite direction of the velocity. And another way of thinking about that is that the ball is in free fall, so the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second uh, squared downward. Second question is when the ball is at momentarily stopped at the top of its path, so v equals zero, what is the direction of the acceleration vector of the ball? Uh, pause the video, think about it, and then we'll uh, discuss. Okay, so here, this was a bit tricky, but uh, this, this ball is momentarily stopped, meaning its velocity is zero. That does not mean that its acceleration is also zero. The acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared downwards, like all objects for whom uh, gravity is the only force. Gravity is acting downwards, so it gives it this 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. And you can think that just before it got to zero, it was moving up, and just after this instant, it's going to be moving down. So this is actually accelerating. And lastly, uh, while the ball is going down, but just before Jason catches it, what is the direction of the acceleration vector of the ball? You can pause it, think it, think about it, and then resume. And hopefully you got down. This ball is now speeding up on the way down, so the velocity and the acceleration vectors are in the same direction. And once again, uh, the ball's in free fall, so the acceleration has to be 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. So we can graph position versus time for any uh, object which goes up 
and then reaches some maximum height and comes back down again. And this is, uh, it looks like it reaches its maximum position at somewhere around uh, about one and a half seconds. So if we now take the slope of this graph at various points and plot that versus time, uh, the slope of velocity of position versus time is velocity versus time. And so that will start off to be a high uh, positive slope, uh, plus, it looks like about plus uh, 13 meters per second. And then as time goes on, it gets slower and slower until it stops momentarily at the top of its path, here at about uh, 1.3 seconds. Then its velocity becomes negative, meaning that it's going down. And it's going down and speeding up, getting more and more negative until it's caught once again, uh, just as it's going minus 15 meters per second. And if we take the slope of this graph, velocity versus time, at any point, uh, we just get this constant negative slope, uh, which looks like this, negative 9.8 meters per second squared at all times.